Hi everyone. Um, obviously we're going to do a little bit of a different episode today um, given the state of things as they are currently. Um, everybody's taking precautions. Uh, first and foremost, I hope all of you out there are okay and that you're staying safe and that you're watching from the safety of your own home if you're able to do that. Uh, so far, you know, we're okay at the moment. You know, uh, Zach and I and our families were kind of hunkering down and we're doing the same thing. We're trying to be proactive and preventative. We are in South Florida, which is unfortunately a hot spot right now. So we are trying to take the extra precautions to be extra safe and this is why I'm filming this episode for my home office. Uh, I just want to do a little bit of a discussion and I know a lot of you are facing the same problem that we are is that you know schools are closing right now. Now what I don't want to do today is just give you a list of drills that you can practice while you're at home. I mean there's already a ton of that material out there as it is. For, to be honest uh, Icy Mike and Cincy Ando they've got lots of great tips that they always put out and even Jesse Encamp just put out um, some really cool uh, simple drills that you can do and practice if, especially if you're at home in a confined space so check out those channels they've got a lot of great tips. What I want to talk about today is more along the lines of the overall big picture of ah, my school clothes are, oh, I can't train right now. So it's not so much specific drills, but how do you approach training on your own, whether this, this lasts a month, a week, you know, multiple months, we don't know. We don't know how long this is gonna last right now. So in the meantime, let's look at the big picture of how you would approach this, this challenge. Now, before we get into this, I do want to address one thing. And whether you're training at home by yourself or if you've got a partner that you train with at home or a sibling or you're going outside in condition to work on pads, regardless of how you train, be extremely careful. Don't go too hard, you know, don't put yourself in unnecessary risk. Keep this in the back of your mind that you want to stay safe, do not get injured. Now is not the time for you to injure yourself. You know, hospitals and healthcare workers are already overstaffed and overworked, and there's actually a good chance if your injury is not that threatening, it might not even be tended to right away. So please, please, please be careful. This is not the time to hurt yourself. So take however safe you'd normally be, bump it up a few notches, just protect yourself because right now there's, there's enough work out there as this. A lot of schools have opened up an online streaming program, especially for the kids, so that way you can still get your training at home, you can still get your instruction. It's not the same as being in a live class setting, but it's better than nothing. Now, unfortunately for most schools, that isn't an option or that's not set up, and a lot of schools have just, you know, closed for a while. So first of all, if you're an MMA student, this one's a little bit tough because MMA is all about working with partners. It's pressure testing, it's sparring. And if you're a kickboxing class or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class, that's harder to train on your own because you do need that feedback. So in the meantime, this is a good chance, obviously, and this shouldn't have to be said is, and I'm sure you guys already know this, keep up your endurance, keep up your cardio, keep up your conditioning. This is a good time to just keep working out, keep moving. But if you feel like challenging yourself, there is one thing you can do that I would maybe suggest. If you are, an MMA student and you've got a mix of arts maybe take a day or two to kind of maybe research another art or maybe look for a kick or a punch that is maybe exists in a different art than you've trained but you haven't done it before and look at it and study it and wonder and see if that's something you can implement something you can work on this is a good chance to do some research and expand your regimen here uh, I'm not saying you have to go out and learn a whole other art I know a lot of you you know a lot of MMA practitioners don't like traditional martial arts and that's fine but that doesn't mean there's not something to offer so this might be a good chance to just do some research just look into an art that you might not have ever given a second thought before and just see if you can pull something from it. Maybe there's a punch, a kick, a block, anything you might go, huh, maybe I could work that in there. Who knows, maybe you'll find something, maybe you'll find your new favorite move doing that. Now, if you are a beginning student, I'm gonna give you kind of the same advice or I would suggest the same thing as the MMA uh, students are in that I would recommend right now you work on moving, get your body going, work on your conditioning, work on your cardio, especially if you're an entry level student and you just started, this is a good time to build up that endurance. Get your breathing tactics down, get your muscle work, you know, do your push-ups, your sit-ups, get conditionings, get your calisthenics in, so that way when you go back to class, you're gonna be in much better shape, much better prepared for whatever they throw at you, and even, you know, whatever you have on at this point, review it, repeat it. If they only taught you one kick or one punch, do it over and over and over and over, and in condition with it, you master that punch, master that kick, so that when you go back, you have a much easier time adapting to the material and learning new stuff. Now, if you're an intermediate student, and this, of course, can vary by different arts, this is a good chance to challenge yourself, because now you should have a pretty good grasp on your system and a good idea, at least a good hold of a lot of your curriculum, so definitely work that repeat that and the same thing is with the beginners go slow break it down but now you have a chance to really kind of dissect it a little bit more maybe go slower and maybe start comparing katas to each other or comparing techniques to each other or do a kata backwards try to take this chance to kind of 
elevate your, your training a little bit. Uh, and some artists, like I know for Kempo, uh, when you're training for your black belt, you have to write a thesis. And it varies by school, but usually your thesis is an observation you have of the art, something you would change, or something you would add, or a pattern you found. It's a personal study, and you, you basically write a paper on it. So maybe use this opportunity, whether your schools do that or not, maybe take this opportunity to do that. Why don't you work on your own thesis? Kind of, what can you break down of your art? What, what have you seen at this point so that if you had to write a thesis now, what could you say about your art? Not just repeat what you were taught, but what are your observations? Now interject yourself into the system. You've learned enough of it to kind of start to make it your own. Explore, this is a good time to explore. So that would be my recommendation for intermediate students. Now for the senior students, or for those of you out there who've been training most of your life. I don't need to tell you how to run your, your own training program. You know at this point, you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, you know what you know, you know what you know. So maybe you take this chance to take a deeper dive. Maybe do this, maybe put together a seminar. Whether you intend to teach one or not, this is a good chance to put together an idea that you would want to propose. So say you had to take out a tidbit from your system and teach it to someone else, maybe of another art altogether. What could you say you what could you say about your system unique to your viewpoint that you could teach somebody else? And like I said, treat it as a seminar. Putting a seminar together um, mentally is a great, great way to develop because it, it kind of makes you look at your art through different lenses and from different perspectives. So maybe sometimes you can uncover new ideas. So I would suggest trying that for a little bit, even if it's just a fun drill. Um, if you've got a really good grasp on your art, maybe explore other arts. Maybe look at an art you might not have considered before, taking a second look at, and see if there's any ideas in there that you can take and implement into your own system. So just look around the other arts. Maybe you'll find something you go, huh, I kind of like that grab, or I kind of like that counter. Maybe I'll start playing with here. And experiment, mix a little bit. This is a good chance to look at other systems. I mean, you might be surprised to find out what systems and what moves actually can overlap with what you're already doing. So it's a good time to play. It's definitely a good sandbox opportunity. So unfortunately, sparring is out for most of us. You know, school's being closed, and let's, let's be honest, this is not the best time to be sweating and spitting and hugging other people. So this is a good chance to expand yourself academically. Even if it necessarily translates to combat or your fighting art, it doesn't hurt to learn something new. And on that note, actually, I'm gonna issue a challenge or request. Let's, let's do this as a fun drill and we'll do it together. I challenge you right now after this video, go look for a martial art that you know nothing about. Maybe maybe one you've never even heard of. Go scan lists, do research or you know, martial arts in, in India or, or go to Wikipedia and just do lists of martial arts. Find something you know nothing about, you've never heard of, and read about it. I mean, spend an hour reading about it. And I don't say you have to even like it. You don't even have to say, oh, I'm gonna use this, but maybe just use this opportunity to see what someone else is doing. You never know. Sometimes just reading about other martial arts can spark interest in something that you wanna try. Or you might be like, oh wow, I never I never knew that. Or if, if you're a mixed martial arts fighter, maybe pick one of the arts you might not know about. You know, Muay Thai is, is really big in, the, in MMA. Maybe look at the history of that. Maybe there's something deep in its development history that you weren't aware of. Or maybe it's, it's it's a concept you can implement or even it's just to learn something new even if you can't apply it to your training it's sometimes good and fun just to learn something new so that's my challenge to you is right now after this video if you're looking for something to do if you want to enhance your training go find an art you know nothing about and just read about it a little bit just do some rudimentary research and i'm really curious for you guys to come back and post below what you've learned just even if it's something a fun fact just something new you know and i'm going to do it too and I'm, i know i'm going to open myself up to a lot of suggestions oh go check out this art go check out that art i'm going to go scan and look for an art that i know absolutely nothing about and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna kind of look at it and just kind of, I'll even report back with my first impressions, just so it might, you know, not a full history of it. So, but just kind of maybe what I liked about it, just what I didn't know about and it's anything I've learned. So let's use this as an opportunity to share and learn with each other. This, this is the perfect opportunity. Now we've covered this before, the whole topic of online training and schools that run through the internet. Honestly, right now, it's your moment to shine. Uh, I've covered this before and I'm still this is an ongoing thing I'm experimenting with but I do believe that online martial arts schools have their place and they have their benefits and, and positives out of it there they are missing some things that I think you get from a dojo and a dojo only so but again being in the time that we're in this is a good opportunity to take advantage of a resource like that so if you're already enrolled in the home training program then perfect continue continue as you were you know you know what you're doing some people 
have trouble learning from videos. It's a challenge. I've met people who, who could read, like I, I can read my techniques the way Kempo is structured and written. I can read a manual and get a really, really good idea of a technique, probably to the point of 90 to 90% accuracy. And I might need adjustment later with an instructor, but not every artist like that. And I know people who, who look at a written technique and they're like, I don't get it. They have to see it visually. So there's definitely different ways to learn. So what I think I'm gonna do is I might put together my own little video for you guys on how you would learn from videos. Like how would you take this material and how would you break it down? Just little tips so that you can get the most out of it. Cause it's not always easy to just look at a TV screen and learn something or just read about it and learn something. I, I have some practice doing so, so I, I feel like I have some tips I can give you. So I might put that together and release that for you guys soon. Just since we're all at home, and if you can get your hands on any videos, at the very least, they can be a great supplemental tool. The other thing that's going to be really tough is sticking to a schedule. Even though there's a lot of downtime, you know, many of you are home with family. You know, many of you are still working from home. You know, pick your days, pick a couple nights a week. You know, if you normally would have gone to class on Tuesday or Thursday, well, then that time, Tuesday and Thursday, work out at home if you can. If you can try to work that out. So try to keep someone to a schedule because it's so easy. And I'm telling you right now, it's so easy to be like, oh, I'll, I'll train tomorrow. And I'm busy today. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go work on this project today since I have the time. I'll train tomorrow. Tomorrow becomes, I'll do it tomorrow. It's so easy to keep making tomorrow tomorrow that you lose track of it and then you fall out of it. It's a very slippery slope. So if you are training at home now, that is going to be one of your biggest challenges. Keep on it, especially if you've got distractions at home. It's okay to feel frustrated. It's okay to be upset, but it's important right now that you still adhere to the safety guidelines. But if you have to take your frustration out on something, do it on a pad. Please don't take it out on anybody in your house or friends or family. Everybody's in the same boat. Everybody's frustrated. So find a healthy way to do it. Me personally, my wave master is my therapy. When you know, like when my father was sick or whenever I'm feeling particularly stressed, I go outside and I just wail on that thing. And it just, just to get that aggression out, it feels good. And my favorite thing of choice is honestly, I don't even go out there and I don't even work technique. If I'm venting, if I'm letting steam out, I'm going for power. And my favorite thing is, you know, my vertical punch, I like to do more uppercut or just like tight rotation vertical punches. When I'm feeling extremely upset, I just go on that pad and I just shoot those vertical punches as hard as I can. Again, I'm not even focusing on technique so much, it's just that power. I just want to just wail and get that energy out. And I actually even kind of make it a game in that I try to hit the pad in a certain way. I try to rotate and push all my power into it and strike it and pull it back to the point where I want the energy to go into the pad that the pad should actually, it hops. So I don't let it sway and come back. That means you're pushing, but I like to focus on getting that. You hit that pad so hard, the pad actually hops. And it just, I don't know, there's something satisfying about making that thing hop, 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 hop across the patio just because of the power you're putting into it. So once again, if it's okay to be frustrated, but just take it out on the pad, not on any loved ones. As far as tools to train with at home, there's a lot of options. We mentioned it before. I'm going to put a link in the description, you know, gifts for martial artists. Uh, but some of them that could come in useful now are, again, are grappling dummies, and there's various kinds. You've got the Sentry versus ones. They're big. They're stand-up. They're very expensive. But you also have MMA dummies. They're made of vinyl. They're pre-stuffed. Those are really cool to work with. Or if, you want, if you're on a budget and you want to go on the cheaper end, they do make grappling dummies that are just cloth, and you fill in your own stuffing. And they're, they're much more economical, and you can put whatever you want in them. So so if you're a grappler, if you want to work on throws, those are great for that. Now I know we can't spar, but maybe the closest thing you can come to it, or at least a somewhat of a, uh, a freestyle drill you can do, is something I, I think it's really cool. It's one of my favorite tools right now. Um, I did get one as a gift for Christmas, and I recommend this to everybody, but it's the boxing ball, or various brands of it. There's no particular brand I recommend, but there's, there's a ton of them, and they are cheap. Basically, it's a strap that you wear around your head, with a ball attached on the string and you hit the ball, it goes out and it comes back and you hit it again. It's great for reflexes, it's great for, for tracking motions and targets and I'll tell you right now, it is a lot harder than it looks. You put that on for the first time you try it, you're gonna feel like a toddler, you're gonna feel like, you're gonna feel like a white belt on day one. It is so frustrating at first but once you start to get the hang of it, when you start getting combinations down, it starts to feel really good. And it gets to a point where, you know, it might not be sparring, but it's a good shadow box, a good freestyle drill, at least with some somewhat of a resistance so that you can hit the ball. And if you get good enough, you can hit it and see people will actually let the ball come back in their face. And they'll do like head bobs and dodges and they'll turn around and hit it the other way. So I've got a link for a few of those in, in the description below. And on top of that, one of our viewers recommended the focus ball, which is very, very similar. And I'll put a uh, link to that below as well. I'm kind of curious to check those out 
out. I've never seen this before until it was suggested. It's very similar to the boxing ball, but instead of you fixing it on your head, you put it on something in your home and there's two of them and you can punch and kick them. So go check that out as well and thank you so much for recommending that because that's kind of cool. I want, I want to look into that a little bit more. I know, it sucks right now not to be able to train in the capacity we would like to. But, you know, you know, we do have to stay together on this. We have to support each other. This is a mental test. This is a big mental test. We train as martial artists to be better versions of ourselves. And it's not just in physicality, but no, it's our mentality as well. And I don't mean mentality is in all oh, we're balanced, we're centered. This is a challenge, you know? you know. We're gonna have to get through this together. So honestly, treat this as a self-defense situation as you would anything else. It's just now fought with more mental power than physical power. So I thank you everybody again. Uh, please be sure to check out our Patreon. We have extra content there in the meantime, and we'll be making more to go on Patreon as well. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe, and we will see you soon. And please stay safe, everyone.